Jeff Todd here for MLB Trade Rumors. We saw some significant news in the baseball world yesterday as it emerged that Red Sox lefty Chris Sale is going to undergo Tommy John surgery. We're going to talk about what that means, maybe give an optimistic scenario of what could be coming. $145 million the team has committed to him over the next five seasons. Can they make that money back through on-field performance? We'll see. Please run down and subscribe below real quick as we get started here. Now, Chris Sale. Let's back up to when he was drafted. This was a guy who you just looked at and thought he might break. Super tall, wiry, skinny guy with that funky, very highly torqued throwing motion. But look, he was extremely durable for quite some time and obviously extremely effective. Sale was really never better than in 2018. He was just so ridiculously dominant that season, but that was also when the first signs of some arm shoulder issues started to arise. Heading into the 2019 season, you just didn't know how he was going to respond after that big 2018 postseason workload that he shouldered for the team. Well, as it turned out, 29 is where things really kind of fell apart. Not to say that Sale wasn't still quite, quite effective, but ended with the 4.40 ERA, uh, gave up a lot of home runs uncharacteristically, and he really ran into trouble late in the season. Forearm issues started to crop up. That's obviously a huge red flag for pitchers, and Sale never got back on the mound once those problems arose. Looked like he was going to have a shot at doing so this spring, kept trying Got back on the mound after a setback, and they shut it down. Not happening. So he's going to end up undergoing surgery whenever he's able to get scheduled. Obviously, there are quite a few other medical concerns going on right now that, quite understandably, may make for some delay. We'll see what happens there. But presuming he gets surgery by the end of the month or give or take, you know, we're looking at a situation where he's not going to be back until at earliest, the middle of next season. By that point, he will already have turned 32 years of age. So what does that mean for a guy like this? Uh, an ace still maybe in the late uh, period of his prime. We've seen plenty of pitchers keep producing excellent results well past this age. But what about those that have undergone Tommy John's surgery? Now, there are obviously a lot of pitchers going right now that have had Tommy John surgery and are doing just fine. Some of the most exciting young arms in baseball, Walker Bueller, Chris Paddock, already have had it. Established high-end veterans like Steven Strasburg, Jacob DeGrom, both of whom have been given large contracts since their Tommy John surgeries. Of course, in those cases, we're talking about guys that had the surgery done much earlier in their careers. Patrick Corbin is a guy that bounced back more recently from Tommy John surgery, although he was still a fair bit younger when he actually went under the knife. So I want to look at some guys that have had the surgery a bit later in their careers. Now, it doesn't always work out. Some young studs have had it at a relatively early point, but after they're already established in the majors and then never really fully gotten back. I'm thinking of Matt Harvey, Josh Johnson. Now, in those cases, you could say it was other health issues that came up and really ruined their careers because they did bounce back initially from Tommy John surgery. Hard to know whether that played a role in the way things ultimately played out. As we know, complex pitching mechanics, you compensate in one place, can lead to problems elsewhere. Certainly, it's a big part of their tale. But there are a lot of examples of guys that have been excellent pitchers through this sort of Chris Sale stage of their career, had the surgery, and then gotten back to full health. So, let's get started. Now, we could look at Chris Carpenter, but... He was even just a bit younger, so instead I'm going to focus on Adam Wainwright. Still active, another Cardinals legend. Waino, he had the surgery a little bit earlier in his career than will be the case for Sale, but still worth looking at. He bounced back in four seasons following Tommy John surgery. 695 in a third innings, 2.99 ERA ball. Now, he did run into new problems in that fourth season, but that was an Achilles tear. Obviously really had nothing at all to do, so far as we can tell, with the elbow issues. Had a couple lean years thereafter, but look, this is a guy who's, 
you know, 37 years of age, and he's still throwing low four ERA ball. So pretty positive outcome on the whole in that case. You could also definitely say the same for Tim Hudson. This is a guy who never had quite the ceiling of a Chris Sale, but a really high-end pitcher for a long time. And he was just Sale's age, about 32 years of age, when he underwent Tommy John surgery late in the year. It was August. He actually made it back in the next season and had seven nice starts. Hudson went on and threw over 1,000 innings of 3.50 ERA baseball from that point forward. So that's a really promising type of a situation to look at when you see a guy at that same age made it back quickly, pushed himself to get back quickly, which may or may not be advisable in all cases, but he was able to still have uh, quite a good volume of innings from that point forward. All right, let me throw a couple active guys at you. You Darvish. Again, a little bit earlier in the career spectrum than Sale, but further on in his career than some of the younger guys we mentioned earlier. Now, Darvish has not quite been as good as he was before his Tommy John surgery, but we're now a couple years removed. He's been pitching fairly effectively. The same skills are there. He's had to iron out a couple of issues, but you can still look at his stuff, look at his arsenal, see that he is a high-end pitcher, and he showed it again last year. But this does go to prove these things are complicated. Complex biomechanics, all manner of different factors can be at play. Darvish hasn't quite been himself. So maybe a bit of a cautionary tale, but even in the worst-case scenario, you're talking about a guy who has high-end stuff and can still get major league hitters out. Wouldn't be at all surprising to see Darvish turn in a stellar season when he finally gets back on the mound in 2020. So, not a bad situation. Let's see how that one goes. How about Lance Lynn? This was a guy who was never quite that high of a talent performer. Had lots of great results over the years. Uh, when he went under the knife, he came back and had a nice bounce back season, but the peripherals were questionable and everybody was predicting doom and gloom. That came to fruition. He struggled. But then a funny thing happened. Lynn discovered a new gear, made some changes, and now he's arguably better than ever. Just came off of a full season, 3.67 ERA, over 200 innings. And now, really for the first time in his career, he's also a high strikeout pitcher. So this is a guy who has actually in some ways become a better pitcher. It took some time, again, as with Darvish, not just smooth sailing, right back at it. And that brings us to the pitcher who's probably the absolute best case scenario for Chris Sale. And we're talking about John Smoltz. This guy had already thrown 2,400 some innings, 3.35 ERA ball to the point in his career where he had Tommy John surgery. He was a bit older than Sale. And of course, pitcher usage was quite different then. He had thrown 800 more innings than Sale had when he went under the knife. Now, Smoltz did come back as a reliever, you'll probably recall, but he then shifted back into the rotation and had a hugely productive career, a whole second half of his career. Again, as with Hudson, over a thousand innings and actually even a bit of a lower ERA than he did over the first portion of his career, though certainly some of that came because of his time in the bullpen, but still immensely successful. The Red Sox would Definitely, definitely sign up for a scenario like that, even if it meant using sale in the bullpen some. Not that I'm suggesting they'll necessarily take that route. So, listen, Red Sox fans, you're feeling bad looking at the doom and gloom scenarios. Definitely, definitely some bridges still to be crossed here. But there are quite a few guys that have had that level of performance to this level of their career who have made it back and still been highly productive pitchers.